Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Susan Saravo with Comerica's marketing team. We are so excited you are joining us today. We have a dynamic speaker, Crystal Washington, who is going to talk to us about using technology to nurture relationships for business success. If you have a question for Crystal, we want you to type it into the chat. In order to do so, you can either start a live stream account or you can enter as a guest. And if you as, enter as a guest, you will be prompted to put in your name and then you'll be ready to join the conversation. So please send us questions. Now let's bring in Crystal Washington. Crystal is a technology strategist and a certified futurist. Crystal, welcome. Thank you for having me, Susan. Well, we are so happy to have you here, Crystal. Now you have a unique view on the current state of interruption for businesses and professionals. Please give us your perspective. Sure, if you're a business owner or professional right now in 2020, it has been a crazy year and anyone would be afraid or just wondering what's coming next. And we have no way of knowing what's coming even a month from now, forget planning years in advance, right? However, this is a time of unique opportunity. I started my first business, I left corporate America, bushy tailed, bright eyed, uh, mid 20 something, two months before the recession hit. Now, for many people, they'd say, oh my gosh, how did that work? Did you lose your mind? No, what I did was, is I understood immediately that the power of networking and relationships was what was going to build this business no matter what. And so the great thing about times like this is that people get in a more collaborative mode. And so this is the time when we need to get out there and network. And in this case, we're going to network digitally, right? But when I started my business, I started a meetup group on meetup.com. And we started having monthly meetings. And I grew a group to over 500 people. And it fed my business. It fed my husband's business that he had just started months before my own. And even more importantly, it started feeding the businesses of the people that were coming to the networking events. And some of them still have partnerships to this day. People are looking for new products, new partners, new referral partners. All we have to do is be open to the opportunity. Crystal, that is great advice. Now, this is a time where people are going through all different kinds of struggles and we obviously wanna be sensitive. So mm -hmm. how do you reach out to people? How do you start that conversation? You know, no matter what kind of business we have or, or what kind of role we have, we're all salespeople. We're either selling ourselves a product or a service at all points in time. And here's the thing, you know, some people that are with us right now, Susan, are like, oh, I have no problem reaching out to people. But the truth is, is that some of you that are like watching us right now might be thinking, oh, I don't know, there's so much going on. People are dealing with so much. Is this the time to reach out? I want you to think back to when you were a child. And I want you to think back to maybe a time when your mother or grandmother or grandfather, they fixed you toast, okay? So I want you to close your eyes for a quick second and just picture the toast that they used to make you. Maybe it was butter on it. Maybe there was marmalade. I don't know how they fixed your toast, okay? Now, remember how it tasted. Remember how it felt in your mouth. Now, open your eyes. Now, I want you to think back to the last time you made toast, now, this is not logical at all, but it's very true. Those other people's toast always taste better than your toast. And we don't know why, but you can taste the intention on the food. You can taste the love on the food. So what does this have to do with you? Because you're probably not selling toast right now. The fact of the matter is people know our intentions. And so we can definitely reach out to people right now if our intentions are correct. That's what I've done for my business. That's what I've coached some of my clients to do. And so right now, when you're reaching out, it's not about milking someone or trying to get the most that you can out of a situation. We're reaching out because people are in a hard time. And I'm sure if you're in business, you offer some type of product or service that people either need or want or brings joy or is very practical. And so approaching people from the standpoint of being empathetic to their situation, but also offering something that has value and your approach having value, especially if you're in B2B, this is especially important, but even B2C, as you're putting out things on social media, the little commercials, the little clips, 
be sensitive, but also realize that you still have something to offer and there are people that still need what you have. We also know that not all industries are suffering right now. Some of them are seeing an uptick in volume. We're also seeing that not all goods are actually seeing less purchasers as well. So as long as we are sensitive to what people are going through, and we keep that in mind as we're reaching out, whether it's one-to-one -one or whether it's through social media commercials, we'll have greater success because people will taste our intention on what we're doing. Crystal, let's talk about the way that we used to communicate pre-COVID. Mm -hmm. We used to have all these networking events and setting up client lunches and doing all kinds of things in person, even stopping by business and, and dropping off a little gift, where we just can't do that right now. So give us some advice on how we're going to do all this virtually and still be effective. Well, we can still kind of do these things, but we just have to be more creative in the way that we're doing. So first and foremost, I just want to encourage everybody, this is the time we need to start reaching out to all of our business contacts, whether we're within an organization, so there's internal contacts we need to stay in contact with, or whether it's for our business, our customers, our clients, our prospects, our referral partners, now is actually the perfect time to reach out. And here's the key. If you don't know what to reach out and say, then just start off asking people, how are you doing? You know, you were on my heart. I was thinking about you the other day or you and the kids and how, how's everything going? Believe it or not, that is often enough because what happens is people are carrying so much of a load and they're just trying to keep going on like nothing else is going on. So when you actually stop to be a listening ear and you just ask them what's going on and here's the thing, you just listen, you let them vent, you hear what they have to say. And again, this could be your referral partner. It could be someone that's with a different department with your organization, whoever you're reaching out to. Now, as you're listening, listen for ways to be of service. So it's not about listening for the sale or listening to get a new customer, client, or referral, but listen to be of service because you might have a resource or an idea that has nothing to do with your business that can be a blessing to them and help them with whatever situation they've had. So I'll give an example. While most of my clients are in the corporate or association arena, I do have one client that's actually a faith-based group, okay, a very large faith-based group. And I was listening to a client one day and they were talking about some challenges that they were having with homeschooling their children, where this faith-based organization that I've done work with, I know that they have wonderful free resources for that. So I suggested it to the client. It made a huge difference for them. It filled that gap. So it doesn't have to do have to have anything to do with your business or professional expertise. Right now, we're becoming sticky in people's minds because we care. So again, ask, just ask them how they're doing. How's work? How's homes? Everybody okay? Is everybody safe? Listen for ways to help and then provide help. And again, it doesn't have to do with your area of expertise. But right now, what's going to carry us forward people will remember the people that cared. People remember the people that reached out. And that's all that business is anyways, it's relationships. We've, we've all been beaten the head with the whole thing about people do business with people that they know, like, and trust. This is just underlying that point. Now, I will say, if you get any good information from the client, anything like maybe their kids' names or, you know, oh, I just had to celebrate my anniversary in the house because of COVID, so now you have the anniversary date. If you have a customer relationship management system, um, and if you're a business owner, you probably have one, depending on if you're a professional, depending on what your, what your job area is, you might have one as well. But wherever you store your contacts information, Put those little pieces of information there. So next time you connect with them, you can mention it. You can remember that they have three children and a pet crocodile or whatever that is. <laughs> okay, let's move on to social media. Uh, we know that a lot of people are on social media. Our customers, prospects are on social media. So it's important to use it wisely. Now, I've told people recently, when you're on LinkedIn, use direct message to just check in with people because we know oftentimes direct messages we're getting from people are just trying to sell us something. Yes. So if you're using that as an opportunity to just say, hi, how are you? I mean, that could really make a difference for someone. What do you think about that? Oh, I think it's extremely powerful. And that's just going back to that reaching out. How are you doing? 
you know, there's so much going on in the world. Tell me about you right now. And you would be surprised, Susan, or maybe you wouldn't. How many people right now haven't had anyone around them, even in their immediate circles, say, how are you doing? Because everyone's trying to convince everyone else to be strong and power on. But in terms of social media, there's a few things you should do really on two different social networks. One for sure, the other one's a maybe. So the first social network is LinkedIn. Now is the time for us to polish up our profiles because tomorrow is not guaranteed. And so we don't know what opportunities we need to attract in the future. So number one, make sure that your picture is updated, okay? So that might mean that you have to uh, do your own COVID haircut. It might mean that you have to, you know, kind of take some things in your own hands and kind of get some things done and, and take it with your iPhone if it's a good, you know, a good iPhone. But update your picture and ensure that it looks like you. Because some of us have pictures from 10, 15 years ago. And guess what? 15 years ago, I had long, straight hair. People wouldn't recognize me, right? So update that. That's a small thing. Next up. We want to make sure that we're taking a look at our key words. Keywords are the words or terms that we use to be found online anywhere. Anyone that has websites knows about keywords because that's really important when it comes to being found on Google. But what most people don't know is that LinkedIn, Susan, runs on keywords as well. And so you can't be found for any word that is not in your profile. Your company cannot be found for any words that are not on its page. And so now's the time to go in there and refresh the headline if it's a personal profile or the entire summary, the whole company page to make sure that whatever words you wanna be found for are included inside of those profiles. And then part three to LinkedIn, Susan, would be to join LinkedIn groups. LinkedIn allows us to join up to 50 groups and you don't have to be active in all of them or even most of them. At, at most, you're probably active in two. But here's the magic of groups. You actually pop up higher in search results for people who you share groups with. So someone you're in a group with, you might pop up on the first pages of search. Whereas if you weren't in that group with that person who's looking for those keywords, you might pop up on four or five. And so it's really important to get those keywords in there so that you can be found. So you want to join those groups that are going to be most strategic, that are either going to have referral partners, prospects, existing customers who might be attached to people that might be good potential customers. So join those. So that's that's my suggestion for LinkedIn. Um, I do have some suggestions for Facebook, too, for those who find it appropriate to be on Facebook connecting with other professionals. And for Facebook, it would be to reach out in the same way that you said, Susan, you know how you said uh, through direct messages? Yes. Okay. So I know some of the people, like right now, some of you, you're actually connected to some of your professional connections or clients via Facebook. It's a choice you've made, and that's great. Well, we know that people feel closer to their connections on Facebook than any other social network. And so reaching out through there, people feel like their friend is checking on them. So make it a habit to check in with at least three people a day. How are you doing? You know, I see that you posted this, but how are things really going right now? Is there anything I can do for you? And then on top of that, make sure that when you're on social media, specifically Facebook, that you're posting things that add value. And that's true of LinkedIn as well. So if you're seeing as you're reaching out to people that people need a lot of the same types of information in general, like for instance, like let's say that your clients happen to be other business owners or your peers, and you know that they need it like the PPP loan. Well, at the time when people were trying to figure that out, then you might actually post about how they can access that through Comerica or another, you know, Comerica as a resource. Um, or let's say that people were looking for information on childcare or whatever else was would be of interest to your potential clients, go ahead and get that on there. And those are the types of things we want to post. Things that lift people's spirits, things that add value. I agree. I think that's very important because sometimes people struggle with what kind of content to put out there. Mm -hmm. And even if you post about maybe a book that you read that was helpful or a trail that you found to do a hike, something like that, as you were saying, something that would make people feel uplifted and bring some value. So very important. We just spoke about Facebook and LinkedIn, but obviously there are other social media platforms like Instagram and Twitter. So you should be using the ones that are working best for you. 
Now, before we go to the next question, we do want to remind you that Crystal is taking questions in the chat. So if you have one for her, please type it in now. Crystal, you are known for sharing tech tools. So what are the cool tools that we should all be using now? Oh, there are so many. And the fact of the matter is they've always been there, but in the past, we didn't have to depend on them. So now we get a chance to try them out. Let's go back and visit social media for just a quick second because it fits into here as well. Right now is the time for us to network. We've already said that. And so go on social media to see who's advertising that they have upcoming networking events so that you can show up, you can meet with your peers, you can make sure that you're staying in the loop, maybe meet up with some clients or prospects. So again, go to Facebook, go to LinkedIn, go to Twitter, go everywhere and see where people are saying that they're having events. Now, the next thing, a little bit more interesting, is that a lot of conferences are now going digital because they have to, right? That's, that's just kind of the truth of the matter. They have to. And one of the things that I love about conferences, Susan, is it's not even so much the sessions, but it's those, those hallway conversations. Do you, ever, do you ever attend events and you kind of get in the hallway and have those conversations with folks? Absolutely. Sometimes that is the best time because you meet people, you build relationships, and then they become friends and future colleagues sometimes. Right. But that's the part of conferences that many organizations are having a hard time emulating. But the mm -hmm. fact of the matter is, if you're listening right now and you have a Zoom account or GoToMeeting account or, or anything where you could do any type of web conferencing, you can actually replicate that. So let's say at the event itself, the online event, oftentimes there's a chat box on most of these big online events. If there's a spacing between programming where they say, oh, we'll be back in an hour after lunch, come back for this part of the program, go ahead and, and throw your link in there and say, hey, let's go ahead and meet at the lobby bar. Here's the link to meet up or let's go ahead and have a hallway talk. Put the link in there. Watch how many people jump in your meeting. And now you have an opportunity to meet some new people, actually build some relationships, and you're going to be a memorable part of the conference because you're giving people the experience they're missing. There's so much value in that. And I've actually recently saw that not as a speaker, but an attendee, and it was brilliant, and we had so much fun. You can do the same thing. So outside of social media and, and using things like virtual conferencing or, or even FaceTime and Google Duo just to meet people face-to-face -face sometimes, just, you know, sometimes you talk to someone, you say, you know what, let's, do you feel like a face-to-face -face conversation? That way you can kind of get their feel. It feels more like an in-person meeting. But Let's talk about the tangible element that everybody's missing. Susan, I'm sure you know people that have been on the more extreme end of social distancing. Is that true? Do you know anybody who's been on the more extreme end of this? Yes, and it has been a difficult and lonesome time for people who have had to stay at home all the time. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, some people have compromised immune systems or whatever reasons they have for having to be extremely social distance. I know people, Susan, who have not had another human touch them in over four months. Wow, that's tough. It's hard. Yeah, it's hard. And tangible right now, the tangible touch means more than ever before. Because with these screens, we can't touch each other. Like, Susan, I, I would love to, but I, I can't quite hug you right now, right? It's not going to work, right? Unfortunately not. No, but I can give you something tangible that still gives you the feeling of getting a hug. So I'll give a couple very personal examples. So when COVID-19 first really hit and the lockdown started and we started seeing all the conferences canceled, right? So the bottom fell out of the industry that I'm in. I talked to my assistant and I said, hey, okay, look, Regina, we're in a good financial position for a good long time, okay? So we don't have to worry about us right now. What we wanna do is let's call our most vulnerable clients, the ones that we know are probably juggling the most right now, and just see how they're doing. Just literally call and say, hey, you're on my heart. How are you doing? So it goes back to that whole asking and listening thing, right? And so we started to do that. And so for instance, I had one client who loves bacon, okay? Now, I know you're probably thinking everyone loves bacon and, and just about everyone does. I'm a vegetarian, so I'm a weirdo, but everyone loves bacon, right? But no, he loves it on a whole different level, okay? Now, he also had multiple businesses that were impacted by COVID-19. So when I reached out to him to talk to him, bless his heart, you know, he had that wonderful spirit that I know and love, but at the same time, 
he was, you know, he's feeling a little down as anybody would. And so what I did was I took it upon myself to, after we got off the phone, research and make him a bacon calming basket. Okay. So I found like bacon candles and bacon coloring books, Mm -hmm. bacon snacks, right? (laughs) We just (laughs) sent him a bacon basket, right? And when he got it, he was so happy. And I was happy I could give that, right? So that's just one example of giving a hug. I, I couldn't touch him, but he I'm sure he felt the love on that. I had another client, Susan, that I call. She's a third-party planner. So she was managing multiple contracts with multiple clients and oh, so much going on right now in the industry, right? Mm-hmm. And she said, Oh, Crystal, my my back is is seized up like a brick right now because I'm so tense staying on the laptop and phone all day. And I said, oh man. So when I got off the phone with her, I got on Amazon and I found one of those little uh, electric chair massagers and I mailed her one. And two days later, Susan, I get this phone call from her and I hear in the background, (laughs) and she goes, oh my gosh, Crystal, this is perfect. I've had it on the past couple hours. Thank you so much. All of this is about making people feel seen. And you don't have to spend a lot of money, but you can send flowers, you can send food. If you're not familiar with some other sites that have some more unique gifts, some other ones that I would recommend would be um, Giftagram. The Gromit has some really creative things. Um, Also Drizzly, if you're trying to send alcohol to someone for some reason. So there's many different resources for sending gifts or even just a customized card. Two of my favorite, favorite apps, Susan, are Send Out Cards and TouchNote, which allow you to create custom cards. You can go with what's already on there, the templates, or you can put a picture of the person on there, have your own wording. You can even send in your handwriting to send out cards and the card will be written in your own hand. So again, that's just one other way to make people feel seen. But Susan, I have a feeling you and I, we, we probably have something in common here um, because yeah. it's in the spirit of Comerica. I've, I've had a partnership with you all long enough to know that Comerica likes to do things big as well and, and also reach out and make their partners feel appreciated. So, yeah. and we are very creative here too, just like you, we're always looking for what are the new tech, you know, tech tools and stuff. But my two that I like to use that actually aren't new, but are, are really good and even free, uh, Word Swag is one in Canva where you can upload a picture and then you could put some graphics of a little message and then Ooh. download it back to your phone and then you can text it to somebody with just a, just a nice little message to them. And then a reminder of some, you know, something that you shared together, whether you're at a conference or something like that and, and just, just share a memory with them. So that's nice. Or you can even record a little video on your phone, like a 20 second video. I just text it to somebody. So I think that's, you're, you're right on point when you say we need to find opportunities to just connect with people in a, in a, just a nice special way. I agree. And, and see, I see you, Susan, cause you're busting out with Canva and all these other things. So you're <laughs> being fancy over there. I love it. So <laughs> one last thing, let's take it up a notch. Cause that's actually a perfect segue. You talked about sending a video. So mm-hmm. maybe you send your own video or maybe you wanna send another special video created by someone else. So two tools for that. The first one is called Fiverr. Fiverr is a resource where you can hire people remotely to do all kinds of work starting at just $5. Now, the beautiful thing about Fiverr is that there are weirdos there. (laughs) Okay, what kind of weirdos, Crystal? (laughs) Probably good and bad, but right now we're focusing (laughs) on the good weirdos, okay? Okay, Okay. that makes me feel better. Yeah, they they have all kinds of crazy talents. So let's say that you have a client or a contact that loves Disney. There is somebody on Fiverr that has some Disney puppets that will do a song dance with Disney puppets for that client starting at $5. It could be Disney, it could be any cartoon you think of. There's someone on there to do all those different types of things. Sometimes they dress in characters themselves. So many creative options for you. Now, let's say you wanna take it up a notch. And you want to get a real pro to do a video, maybe something that you know is going to touch their heart. There's a resource called Cameo, Susan. 